to talk about the Brussels false media narratives, who's really behind all this chaos. And this is a topic that really struck a chord with me because I have tuned into so many situations where all of these false narratives are being spread and they're doing it in such an alarming rate that people that don't want to really look at facts or do research are taking these false narratives as truth. And I just wanted to dig a little deeper into this. So before I get started, please don't forget to go in and hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Um, so without further ado, here we go. So this question that was sent to me is, I recently watched a video regarding the protest in Brussels. The people opposing the beer bug shot were peaceful as they gathered together on the streets. The media took excerpts from the opposing group and because of censorship, I have to change my wording and I had a commenter one time use this phrase, so I'm gonna go along with it. This opposing group who was referred to as anti-fart, and we know who this group is in all black with red trim. They were really the ones that were causing all of the social unrest issues. The video also shows how these anti-farters have been paid to be organized and their behavior is intentional. The police are ordered to stand down and allow this unlawful behavior to occur. What is going on with our world and when is this lunacy going to stop? And on the blog post itself, I share a link that goes into this video. I'd encourage all of you to watch it. It's very eye-opening as to what is really going on. And it is truthful documentation as to what this Brussels protest was. People gathering the streets peacefully, walking and collaborating together. Just basically saying, we oppose this beer bug shot. And that was it. No destruction, no looting, no burning, no bullying, no chasing people with things of, you know, sticks and batons or whatever it may be. So go in and watch the video for yourself and maybe share that video. I think it would be really great to get this out there. So I wanted to think about this more of what is going on here. And I mean, it's no secret that the left is being led and funded by, um, a man that starts with the last name of S-O-R. I can't even say that out loud because I know I'm gonna get flagged for that. He is basically trying to destabilize countries and keep us divided. They are, without a doubt, lying to us via the media because they want the sheeple of the world to think that the conservatives are the problem. What do you do? You get your enemy, you vilify them and get everybody on your side to go after the people that are opposing you. That's what this guy is trying to do. They need to keep the narrative alive that the conservatives need stop. The conservatives threaten the left's goals and that's truly, truly what this is all about. They create fake narratives and they create people who want to virtue signal. Thus, we have more division and people can't come together because there's a lot of lies out there being thrown around and depending on what people believe in their level of desiring to research things further than what they hear, it just creates a problem all the way around. What these virtue signalers fail to realize is they're being played, but they're not going to know it until it's too late and they're slaves to this system of their own creation that they're fighting to create. They don't even realize what it is that they're doing or that they're pawns in this, this big game, this big plan that's being out there. And if it doesn't get stopped, it, that's what's going to happen. As It's as if there's this war happening out there, but rather than have blatant army versus army, they have people divided into pockets of the world, which we see that. We have these protesters in areas of the world and they wanna go and attack that. How do you best destroy these societies? Because these civilized countries, they're the biggest threat to this one world government that they're trying to accomplish. So what do you do? You go out and you destroy culture, you break down values, you force acceptance of mental illness, and we all understand what that is without me going into detail, but that's what's happening out there. They're killing their religions and they're creating a victimhood society. And they're succeeding because they just keep propagating it. We're like, it is so forced in everything with marketing, with TV shows, with movies, with all the stuff that we are getting, they're just, they're shoving it down our throats. Um, you punish those that stand up. And again, without getting too specific, look what happened to those that stormed a certain place last January. 
and you bail out the ones that do happen to get arrested for causing havoc on the streets. So basically, you go and you burn a building, you go loot something, and they make an excuse for you. But you go and you stand up for your rights and look at the persecution you get from that. It's like a very disproportionate amount of punishment, if any at all, for the ones that are causing some of the worst criminal activity out on the streets. So all in all, what appears to be this complete insanity is truly a plan from the top. They're intentionally doing this. They want us destabilized and they're trying to ruin our culture. How do you ruin it? You send a mob out there to tear down statues or destroy a historic building or, you know, create all this just complete nonsense out in the public. And that's what they're doing. And then they excuse it. Oh, well, these people, well, they deserve it. Oh, well, they have this and that reason. You're creating this victimhood society out of people who victimhood is the complete opposite of empowerment. You're taking the power away from the people and their own ability to sustain and thrive and grow. And you're, you're creating this storyline of, well, they need it. They deserve it and all this stuff. They're doing a complete disservice to a lot of people who are buying into all this. And then as I was focused on this, it really reminded me of this argument that gun laws are only going to impact those that obey the law and criminals are always going to have them. It's the same kind of scenario. In this situation and everything like what happened in Brussels or protests in general or people just trying to stand up for themselves, we have a situation where law-abiding citizens, they try to find ways to legally protest, but the ones that act like the savages are going to overrun them because they don't abide by these civil rules, these societal rules, constitutional rules that are out there. We have to come together as people and quit allowing the division between us all. And I see an image and I got this and it really is very parallel to what's going on. It's these hyenas and they're attacking the zebra. And I felt like it was trying to say, you know, people need to find like-minded people and being together. Don't be the zebra that's by yourself and being intimidated by these hyenas. And we all realize who that group is. I can see in my mind what it would take to stop it, but I really hesitate to say it on here because of all the censorship and people reading into things. But let's just say that if a mass organized group that followed the same rules as the ones in the black with the red trim follow, and they seek out the armed leaders of that group, or not the armed leaders, but they seek out the uh, basically the leaders of that group, what would happen? And then I heard this phrase in my head, which also really rang true to me. What happens to the treasonous people or what happened to them 200 years ago? Let's put an image in our mind. What would you have done if you'd have gone against your country 200 years ago, tried to destroy it, tried to dismantle it from the inside out, and tear it apart? What would happen to a person during that time frame? You know, maybe, maybe things will come full circle. History does repeat itself. It's going to get ugly, it's going to get scary, but it's inevitable on this current timeline. People will reach a point where they're not going to take it anymore. Surprisingly, we haven't come to that line in the sand yet, but I really feel it's close. When I focus on this topic, just the energy behind it is really, really intense and very heavy. Listen to your inner truth. Be on the right side of history. We're living this together and don't allow yourself to fall into that victimhood trap that they are pushing and pushing and pushing on people. They want everyone to be a part of it because if you're a victim, you're not in power. And if you're a victim, you you look at things like it's out of your control and things are in your control. Maybe not to the extent you wish they were, but if you really looked inward, there are things you can do within your life to try to recapture some of that and don't relinquish your power to someone else. And that's all I have for this reading. I'd be curious your thoughts. Please feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to like my videos, share my channel. All of it helps me out so, so much. Again, I'm Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com. Thank you. Bye.